In this video, we're going to go over some common 3D shapes that you need to know, along with some equations and formulas as well. So the first shape we're going to talk about is the sphere. It looks like a circle if you draw the two-dimensional version of it, but if you draw the 3D version of it, it's a, a sphere. Now you need to know that the volume of a sphere is equal to 4 thirds pi r cube, where r is the radius of the sphere. Now the radius is the distance between the center of the sphere and any point on the surface of the sphere. The next formula you need to be familiar with is the surface area. The surface area is equal to 4 pi times the square of the radius. Now the units for area is always units squared and for volume it's always units cubed. So let's work on an example problem with the sphere. So let's say we have a sphere with a radius of let's say 5 centimeters. So what is the surface area and the volume of the sphere? Let's start with the surface area. So we know it's 4 pi r squared and we see that r is equal to 5 centimeters. So feel free to pause the video if you want to try this problem. So this is going to be 4 pi times 5 centimeters squared. Now let me take out my calculator. Now if you're going to use pi s 3.14 you might get a different answer than I'm going to get because I'm going to use the exact value of pi which is in my calculator which is 3.14159 with some more numbers attached to it. So 4 pi times 5 squared that's going to be basically 100 pi which is 314 0.159 with some more numbers and then square centimeters. So anytime you need to calculate the area of an object your units is going to be unit squared. So if this was let's say 5 inches this would be inches squared and so forth. Now let's move on to the other problem. Let's calculate the volume of the sphere. So let's use this formula. And so all we need to do is we need to replace r with 5 centimeters. So what's 5 to the third power? 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. And since we multiplied centimeters by centimeters by centimeters three times, now we have cubic centimeters. So then 125 times 4 is 6, is 500 rather. So this is equal to 500 pi over 3 cubic centimeters. That's the exact answer for the volume of this object, but let's get the decimal value of that. So 500 times the exact value of pi over 3. So I got 523.599, if you round it, cubic centimeters. Now let's say if you're using just 3.14 instead of, you know, the exact value of pi. The answer that you would get would be 523.3. So it's not exactly the same, but they're still close enough. But if you use the exact value of pi, you should get this answer. Now the next 3D shape we're going to talk about is the cylinder. And so here is a rough sketch of the cylinder. So you need to know the volume and the surface area formulas for this type of shape. So this is the radius of the cylinder. Let's put an R here. That's a terrible looking R. Let's do that again. Sometimes my computers uh, be having issues. Now this is the height of the cylinder. Now the volume of the cylinder is the volume of the base, I mean it's the area of the base, multiplied by the height. So notice that the base has the shape of a circle. And what is the area of a circle? The area of a circle is pi r squared. So that's the area of the base. And then we need to multiply that by the height. And so this gives us the volume of a cylinder, which is pi r squared times the height. It's simply the area of the base times the height of the cylinder. Now, next up, we have the surface area. The surface area of the cylinder is the area of the base plus the lateral area. Now, the area of the base is the area of a circle. But keep in mind, we have a circle at the top and at the bottom. 
So it's going to be pi r squared, but times 2. Now what about the lateral area? The lateral area is the perimeter multiplied by the length, but it's going to be the perimeter of the base. So what is the perimeter of a circle? The perimeter of a circle is the circumference of a circle. And the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. Now the length of the cylinder is the same as the height. So that's how we can get the surface area of a cylinder. So it's 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, where r is the radius of the cylinder or the circle in the cylinder, and h is the height of the cylinder. Now the next shape we're going to talk about is the cone. So here's one way in which you can draw the cone. And so here we have the radius of the cone. And this is the height of the cone. So that's h. And notice that we have a right triangle on the inside. L is known as the slant height. So what are the formulas for the volume of a cone and the surface area of a cone? The volume is very similar to the volume of a cylinder. Imagine if you drew a cylinder. But it turns out that the volume of a cone is one-third that of a cylinder. So it's just one-third pi r squared times the height. Now what about the surface area? The surface area of the cone is going to be the area of the base plus the lateral area. And we know the area of the base is going to be the area of the circle. That's the base. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. Now what about the lateral area? It turns out that for this shape, it's 1 half the perimeter times the slant height instead of just pl. Now the perimeter is going to be like last time. It's going to be the circumference of the circle which is 2 pi r. So we have 1 half 2 pi r and then times the slant height. So we could cancel 1 half in 2 because half times 2 is 1. And so we get this formula for the surface area of a cone. It's pi r squared plus pi r l where l is the slant height as we mentioned before. So how do we go about finding the value of l? To find the value of L, you need to use the Pythagorean theorem. Notice that we have a right triangle with those three sides. So based on the Pythagorean theorem, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. In this case, C is the length of the hypotenuse, which is going to be the slant height. So L squared is equal to R squared plus H squared. So therefore, L, the slant height, can be found using this equation. So if you need to calculate the surface area, find the slant height, and then use that with the radius to find the surface area of the cone. And then here's the other formula you need, the volume of a cone. Now the next shape I want to talk about is the rectangular prism. Let's see if I can draw a decent shape for it. So basically it looks like a box. And here it is. So let's call this the length, the width, and the height. So what is the volume of the rectangular prism? The volume of any prism is the area of the base times the height. So let's view this as the base. The area of the base is basically the height times the width, based on what we drew. And then the height of the prism is the same as the length, so we can replace h with l. And that's going to give us this equation. The volume of a rectangular prism is the length times the width times the height. And I prefer to remember this formula in this form. It's just easier. Now the surface area of a rectangular prism, I'm just going to give you the formula. It's 2LW plus 2WH plus 2LH. 
Now, if you want to know how to get it, if you find the area of, let's say, this side and this side, it's going to be W times H, but there's two of them, so you have 2WH. So that's for the left side and the right side. Now, if you calculate the area of the top part of the prism and the bottom part, notice that it's L times W, so it's going to be 2LW. And then if you take the area of the face in the front and the face that's in the back, it's going to be L times H, so you get 2LH. So you got to find the area of each of those six faces and then add it up. Or you could simply use this formula. So that's how you can calculate the surface area of a rectangular prism. Now let's call this point A and point B. So what is the distance between point A and B? How can we find the length of the diagonal of a rectangular prism? The diagonal length, it turns out, it's the square root of w squared plus h squared plus l squared. So in another video where I talked about like rectangular prisms, I explained how you can get that formula, but I'm not going to do it in this video. But if you look up another video I have on YouTube, like volume, surface area, and diagonal length of a rectangular prism, you could find it if you want more information on that. But just in case you need to, that's the formula to find the diagonal length of a prism. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is the cube. And so first, let's draw a picture. And so here's a rough sketch of a cube. And what you need to know about a cube is that all sides are equal. I know my picture looks terrible, but we'll work with it. So we can say that each side is x. Now we know that the volume of a rectangular prism is the length times the width times the height. For a cube, it's going to be x times x times x, which is going to be x cube, or side cube. So that's the volume of a cube. Now, the surface area of a cube is going to be the area of all six faces. The area of just one face is x times x, or x squared. Since we have six of them, it's going to be 6x squared. Now, the last thing we need to talk about is the diagonal length of a cube. So the distance between points A and B. Now, we're going to start with this formula, and that is the diagonal length for a rectangular prism. W, L, and H, they're all equal to X when dealing with a cube. So 1X squared plus 1X squared plus 1X squared is going to be 3X squared. And the square root of 3X squared is the same as the square root of 3 times the square root of X squared. And the square root of X squared has the same magnitude as X. So the diagonal length is going to be the square root of 3 times X. And so that's it for this video. So now you know some basic 3D shapes and the equations and formulas that go along with it. Thanks for watching.